I co-created Jewel, which was another wonderful compliment that David paid me. Um, because I met with all his writers at Paramount, and he walked me out to the car later, and he said to me, okay, forget about everything we just talked about. And I'm thinking like, oh, I must have fucked up again. <laughs> now this meeting never happened. <laughs> you know, because I'm always thinking the worst. And I think it came from facts of life. That's what it did to me. Um, okay. And he goes, don't even pay attention to what my writers shared with you. I want you to write the character that you perceive in my show. I want to know what's inside you, in your heart, how you think. I want you to develop this character for me. And I was like, I was totally blown away. Wow! And I went home and read everything I could read on the 1800s and the westerns and all of that. And what she would be like, and I think I sent him about maybe 15 to 18 pages of backstory on the character. He called me within 30 minutes, and he said, Jerry, this is David Milk. I said, hi, David. <laughs> I just read your backstory. Yeah? He said, I like 98% of it. <laughs> My response was, what 2% what didn't you <laughs> He said, well, you're a brilliant writer, Jerry. And I remember tears. I was on the phone and tears came out of my eyes. He acknowledged that I could write. And that meant so much to me. And I was like, thank you, David. And he said, no, you really are. I mean, I'm blown away. But I don't like her name. You don't like her name? No. I named my character Crazy Kate. I don't like it. Well, I like it. <laughs> he said, I don't. Her name's going to be Jewel. And there was just silence on the line because immediately I remembered fact of life and being Jerry. And I thought, oh my God, this is the second half of it. Now I'm Jewel. I wasn't thrilled with it, but I understood the energy, the symbolism of it. You're given a second chance. And the only thing, the only other thing he didn't like about what I wrote was I wrote that I was friends with Calamity Jane. <laughs> I said, what the matter with that? <laughs> well, that's too problematic. <laughs> and I thought that they would be good friends, <laughs> but he didn't see it that way. Now I understand why. <laughs> but um, he... He gave me an opportunity when Hollywood threw me away. And um, what a gift coming from him. And I, I think there is going to be a Deadwood movie. There's been talk about it in the trades. And if there is, I'm just hoping they will let me do that new thing. <laughs> The whole relationship with Calamity Jane was, <laughs> was that she was a male killer, delivered mail with horses. And I wrote that when I was a small child that I couldn't walk, I didn't, and they didn't know what cerebral palsy was back then. And I couldn't stand up and walk. And I wrote a backstory of my father taking me into the barn and watching the birth of a colt 
and standing up for the first time. And my father holding me up, standing me up with his arm and saying, if that coat can stand up on those wobbly legs, you can stand up on your wobbly legs. And I thought that she would come in contact with Calamity Jane. <laughs> I love the special ed thinking. <laughs> with her love of horses. So I thought they would be friends and it would be cool and they both like horses. <laughs> and David goes, no, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I also know that he used a lot of my stuff uh, because I wrote that, I, that my parents were both killed and that I ended up in an orphanage, which is what I wrote. And if you watch episodes of Deadwood, you'll see dialogue where it leans to that. Um, where Trixie was telling my good friend, Columbus, <laughs> 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 that Twaringen really wasn't a bad guy. I mean, he did take Jewel out of the orphanage. And I think I don't know for sure, because I'm not in Melissa's head, but I think my own personal interpretation of that was Twangin treated me like shit, you know, on the show. But he also loved me. I mean, he would clean up blood that I couldn't do myself, and he'd get on his hands and knees and do that. Um, I think Swearingen was her brother. Mm. I think they both were in the orphanage, and that's why he took her from it. But you see, if he let anybody know that he had a soft side, it would ruin his whole reputation. So I would, I think something along those lines would have probably followed. I, I don't know positively, like I said, I'm not in David's head. But he did use a lot of what I wrote and incorporated it. Um, wow. I still smile at that gift that he gave me. I will always be grateful for that.